Every time I see a video titled how I study 8, 10, or even 12 hours a day, it sort of boils my blood. I don't know why this video idea is so common. It's like most people that start making videos to help people how to study think that this is some sort of impressive feat that needs to be replicated. With all due respect to all of the creators who have made videos with that concept, it shouldn't be replicated. In fact, it's kind of stupid. I went through all of my GCSE years getting pretty much all nines, and then I went through my A-level years getting A stars and A's without needing to study more than three hours a day on any given day. On days where I didn't have a test coming up, whether a unit test or a mock or an actual exam, I would just put in a 30 minute session where I would make notes or go through flashcards or something similar. And then in the days leading up to an exam or a mock that maybe could go up to two hours, maybe sometimes three hours, but that's an outlier. And so I don't understand the fanaticism with studying for an unhealthy amount of time per day. Which is why I'm here today to break down why some people might go down the path of enslavement to the textbook and give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to avoid it. And so firstly, why do people feel like they need to study for literally half of the day just to get decent grades? Well, there's two main reasons. The first is that some people just procrastinate and delay putting in the work until like a month before their exam. And then suddenly they feel like they can just channel this infinite source of energy that they're going to study from. I've we'll always preached that you have to start as early as possible, even if you're still in year 10. In fact, my very first video around a year and a half ago was about this very topic, studying as early as possible. And so the benefit of starting as early as possible is that you could break down the total amount of studying you need to do over more days. And so you can study less per day. And so let me give you two scenarios. Person A, from the beginning of year 11, does 30 minutes of some sort of studying per day. Let's say he makes flashcards or goes through notes or whatever. From September all the way to April, person A puts in 30 minutes a day of studying. And then maybe in the month leading up to the exams, they'll increase it to, let's say, two hours. Compare that to person B, who doesn't really study all the way up until April, and then all of a sudden, it hits him. He needs to study. And so he thinks that he needs to put in 10 hours a day just to catch up to person A. Who's going to do better at the end? Who's going to find studying easier and who's going to have better mental health throughout the whole year? Person A, because they don't need to do 10 hours a day. They only need to do maybe two hours in the month leading up to the exam. And so they're not stressed out. They have time to do other hobbies. They're not only focusing on revision the whole time. By the time April comes, person B won't know what he needs to do to get the top grades because he just hasn't been studying. And on top of that, person B wouldn't have the discipline to put in the work because they haven't been studying, they haven't been training their brains with frequent studying sessions. And even, even if they somehow manage to get in 10 hours a day for that month, by the end of it, they're going to be burnt out. They're going to be barely holding on. They're going to be hating their lives. While person A, person A is chilling. Person A studies for an hour or two and then he spends the rest of the time doing whatever he wants. Now, person A is not sort of myth or a fairy tale. It's what I did. It's what I did in GCSEs and what I did in A-levels. So what's important to realize is that GCSEs and A-levels, they're a marathon. They're not a sprint. Let's say you give yourself a negative experience early on in your academic career, in GCSEs for example. That creates an association in your brain between anything academic and just depression, anxiety, and just hating your life. What that means is that when you're done with GCSEs, your brain then won't be able to bear the thought of doing another two years of the even more difficult A-levels and then uni and so on. And so for the sake of our longevity throughout school and then uni, we need to preserve our mental health when studying. Believe it or not, you can actually do pretty well in your GCSEs and A-levels without hating your life. I did it. Now the second reason why some people might think that they need to study 10 hours a day just to get the top grades is that they just don't know how to study efficiently. If I could sum up my YouTube channel in four words, it would be learn to study efficiently. The reason why people might think that they need to study for half of the day is not because they're not intelligent or they don't have it in them or something like that. It's because their studying technique has a lot of useless elements that just eat up their time and energy and doesn't give them any sort of return on investment. You probably know about the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of the results will come from 20% of the action. That applies perfectly to studying. 80% of getting the top grades will stem directly from 20% of the things you do while studying. And so if we can find that 20% and then make it 100%, we could cut down the amount of revision we need to do per day by more than a half. So what is that 20%? Well, it depends on what subject you're revising, but in general, you just have to engage with the information. Let's say I spent an hour going through a chapter in a textbook and reading and highlighting while you spent 30 minutes going through a YouTube video that explains that same exact chapter and turning that information into flashcards. By the end of both our studying sessions, who's going to benefit more? Not only would you have spent half of the time studying that I spent, you would also retain so much more because you actually engaged with the information by turning it into flashcards. And on top of all of that, you now have a new resource that you could use in the future to make revising for that chapter much easier. While poor me, despite spending the past hour reading and highlighting, I probably retain no more than 15% of what I just read. And so, if you want to keep your sanity and get away with only revising two hours a day, if even, start as early as possible and then find active studying techniques related to whatever subject you're revising, and then make those techniques the focus of your revision. And trust me, you'll do much better than those people studying 12 hours a day.